Greetings, folks. This is a review of the movie Sex in the City 2, starring Sarah Jessica Parker, reprising her role as Carrie. Uh, this movie is a sequel to the motion picture Sex in the City, which was an extension of the series on HBO that was on for a handful of seasons. Uh, before we get into the official movie review, I'll do a quick plot summary. It's two years after the first movie, and uh, what the what happens is there. What happens is essentially um, the gals get together and they're uh, they're given a trip to. I'm gonna skip some of the major details, but they're essentially given a trip uh, free of charge to Abu Dhabi, and the reason being is that um, owners of a hotel. Are looking to get more American tourists, and so they so it's a PR trip, paid in full, so that they can experience the luxuries of of uh, Abu Dhabi, and then go home and tell everyone how wonderful it is. So they get there, and uh, hilarity ensues, temptations are thrown at them, things happen, and lessons are learned, and they go back to the United States. It's a thin plot, but it's heavy on themes. So, with that being said, um, before we go any further, the reason I'm doing this review, part of the reason, as we'll say, is, besides the fact I just saw the movie, is I tend to on I tend to see a lot of reviews for movies that are geared towards women, Twilight, for example, that are reviewed by guys, that are reviewed by people that are not the target audience of the movie itself, and so you end up getting these reviews that tend to pan a movie that wasn't geared towards them in the first place. Matter of fact, before the movie, before I went to go see the movie tonight, I would heard Michael Medved, who if you don't know who Michael Medved is, he's a center-right to far-right, depending on your point of view, radio host who, uh, who shtick his movie reviews and focus on the family moments. And he said this is, this is gearing up to be one of the worst movies ever, uh, this worst, worst movie of the year, and he went on to pan the movie and talk about how terrible it is. And I'm not going to get into his review of it. But clearly it wasn't meant for him. Though he did say he saw it with his wife and his wife hated it too. Um, Sex in the City, not, not Christian conservative culture. I'll tell you that right now. So, um, here is a review coming from the perspective of a woman who is actually the target audience of the movie. I couldn't find a gay guy. Sorry. With that being said... <laughs> no, I'm not a gay guy. No, you're not a gay guy. Uh, here she is, the fabulous Mrs. Rattledge, to co-review with me Sex in the City 2. Woohoo! So, let's start with the most basic question. Did you like the movie? Um, for the most part, yes. There are definitely parts of it where I kind of felt like, okay, why, why are we sitting here watching this? Um, so, over those parts where you were bored, or you just didn't understand didn't, what purpose they were in the movie? Part, a um, little of both. Actually, I have to say, like, while it was fun to see the Liza Minnelli over-the-top gay wedding, I still cannot figure out what the point of having it in the movie was. I really can't. Other than The gay to, wedding or Liza Minnelli? The gay wedding. Oh, I can tell you. See, I, I just, I think that it wasn't necessary. That's my point. I don't think it was necessary. I don't think it gave anything to the story. Would you say that that was common throughout the movie, that there were just things that you felt were thrown in without having a meaning? A little bit. It's like they needed to include old gag or old, you know, old, old themes from the show because they think that that's what people wanted to see. And that wedding being one of the major ones for me. Okay. One of the criticisms that the, Sex the first Sex in the City movie had, and I'm sure this one will follow, is that these seem like really long episodes. Yeah, it definitely does. Okay, and you said that followed for this movie as well? A little bit. Except, I mean, and it's not even that it felt like a long episode. It's like they have to take aspects of the show that fans love, and to pander to those true diehard fans, they have to throw the bone. And so Can you give me of, examples of a couple of bones that they threw? Stanford and um, 
Mario Cantone's character, whose name I can never remember, getting married. I'm sure. Well, look, for the purposes of anyone listening to this review, Mario Cantone will be fine. Yeah. I mean, you know, that that goes back to the days where in the show those two hated each other, and Charlotte and Carrie had to keep them separated. Yeah, see, that wasn't made... Cl- I mean, I'm not a fan of the show. I've never watched it, and I only went because yeah, I'm so, married to you. <laughs> so that was hysterical because it's like, oh, her, you know, her gay best friend's marrying my gay best friend, and they don't like each other. So it was kind of one of those things where it was like, okay, that that was kind of meh. Um, some of the corny jokes. Yeah, I had really asked you bad wordplay. I had asked you about that. You know, there's a there's a throwaway line. There was a a number of throwaway lines throughout this movie, um, but one of them was you know where Kim Cattrall sort of falls yeah. over Jessica Parker and says, you know, Lawrence of my labia. Yeah. And I just looked at you and I'm like, do they do this in the series too? Yeah, I mean, part of that's part of the gag with Carrie's column, is Carrie's column always has some clever pun to it. Mm-hmm. So that was just kind of like, I mean, I understand the point of it, but again, I just you, you kind of get to a point where you're like, really, really, we have to... Can we get, get to the storytelling? Yeah, a little bit. Okay, um, let me uh, give you my take on it really quick. I liked it. I'm not, again, I'm not its target audience, um... We will reprise things that I enjoy when I review the A Team. Um, but you know, I, I'm not the target audience. Most straight men not gonna enjoy this movie. I actually, and and I want to be specific about this. If I'm not bored, I tend to like what I'm watching. Like I was bored during the movie Wolverine. As much as I'm a huge comic book fan, a huge comic book movie fan. Wolverine was boring, therefore it was bad. I wasn't bored by this. No, and I wasn't either. I actually really enjoyed it. I thought that it was beautiful, the scenery at least. I mean, absolutely incredible. Um, kind of made me want to go to Abu Dhabi, even though I now know it wasn't shot in Abu Dhabi. It was yeah, shot in we're, Morocco. We're going to get to that. But um, I still totally want to go. Okay. Um, let's. I'm going to break this down into a couple of parts. And the first part I want to talk about is themes. Because you had mentioned... Uh, that the movie starts off with this big gay wedding. Yeah. Which, to go back to the Michael Medved review for a second, he was like, oh, this was, you know, it starts off with this really grotesque gay wedding. And I'm thinking it's going to be guys in, like, you know, because it's somewhat exposed to gay culture um, throughout my years. I don't think it's going to be guys in, like, leather or something. I didn't see anything wrong with the no, wedding. No, I didn't either. I thought it was really cute. There was there was a chorus of guys singing, and then Liza Minnelli comes out. Not to give away one of the spoilers or anything, but no. it, 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 people know about this. And I'm not giving away anything that people didn't know about. They actually do show it in the commercial, but you would really think that it was just impersonators dancing. Mm-hmm. Because, I'm sorry, Liza has not aged very well. She looks like her own transvestite impersonator. <laughs> Slightly off topic. Every time sorry. Liza Minnelli's leg, legs... No, 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 you're fine. Yeah. But every time Liza's legs spread, I kept thinking, Psst, you're balls are showing. Yeah. <laughs> I really did. I, she definitely has that look of like a tucked male. It's really comical. Um, but, but I have to say, I was pretty impressed that she could still move as old as she is. And she has definitely lost weight. Yes. I I thought it was Eliza Minnelli impersonator. And if I hadn't known ahead of time that that was really Eliza Minnelli, well, I would have opening, been shocked. She's in the opening credits. I don't know if you saw that. When yes, I saw shot, that. They said Liza Minnelli, and I went, what? And I couldn't right. figure out what they were going to do with her. But they definitely, I mean, it was great. She yeah. did a great job. It was funny. For, I'm not a fan, but, you know, for what she did, it was fine. But, okay, themes of this movie. Temptation. Yes. What it is to be in a marriage once the honeymoon period is over. Yes. This is definitely the second theme. Um, familyhood. What it means to be in a family, and then go well, back to what it means to be I'd in a say marriage. Go farther than that. It's not familyhood that they looked at. It was motherhood that they looked okay, at. Okay, fine. Again, motherhood. We're talking about a movie geared towards women, women who, you know, some and a lot of women. And and personally, I can kind of see that because I'm kind of in that same thing. I started watching this show, you know, as a single woman running around dating, essentially. Mm-hmm. I mean, a little bit before that. But, I mean, that was that was my, you know, I was kind of going with that. And then, you know, when Carrie got married, I had just gotten married. Or, actually, we hadn't even gotten married yet. We were engaged. And so, it's kind of, you got to understand that these are iconic women that we've all transitioned with. The mm-hmm. target audience has transitioned with. And for a lot of that audience, they are now facing the deal of motherhood and just how... How do you balance How do you, it? And, and losing yourself. Okay, so the purpose of the... So going back to some of the thematic elements, um, 
the big theme, like I said, plot doesn't carry this movie. It's a thin plot. Um, theme carries this movie. And so Sarah Jessica Parker's character is struggling with settling into... Well, she doesn't want to become that boring married couple. I think but there was something beyond that, though.